This lesson takes the moving morph that we did in the previous tutorial a step further for a more advanced level of control. You should watch the moving morph tutorial first so you understand how I got to where I am with the result that I'll be starting with here. Now I'm going to demonstrate how we can have color blending on a per-spline basis, as well as per-spline control of the shapes. Let's take a look at what I'm referring to by per-spline changes. You can see in the side-by-side -side that the torso, legs, and feet transition a little earlier, while the neck, head, arms, and hands transition a little later. If we go to specific frames, like here at frame 331, you can see that the torso is completely Sarah, the leotard, instead of a blend between James's torso and Sarah's leotard. Then you'll see at frame 361, you still see James's head on Sarah's leotard and legs because the head transition happens later. This is to say that by default, when we use the global warp and global blend parameters, we get a warp and blend that change for the whole image at the same rate. In order to customize the rate differently for each spline and override the overall rate control like we just saw in this comparison, we need to disable the use global blend percentage. When disabling the use global blend percentage and use global warp percentage, Reflex then uses the per spline amount of color blending and or warping of the from splines using the opacity and expansion settings for each spline. The opacity controls color blending and the expansion controls the warping amount. The default setting for opacity and expansion on each spline is 100% and we need that to animate for each spline. To start, we can select all the splines and use the keyboard shortcut TT on both Mac and Windows to show the mask opacity and mask expansion properties for all the splines. We can use the mask opacity and expansion to determine the blend and warp percentage between the from image and the to image. A value of 0% would make it completely the from image, and a value of 100% would make it completely the to image. Values in between will blend the amount of the from and to for each mask appropriately. We could go to all the splines or groups of splines and manually animate each of the splines for the blend and warp properties, but that would be rather time consuming and not very efficient. I will show you how to use simple expressions and control layers to animate these properties for groups of splines at a time, which is a more efficient way of doing this. We can use a control layer and expressions to link a set of spline parameters, mask expansion or mask opacity from a single spline settings for those parameters by making an expression that links to the control layer. So in this case, we will need four slider controls, two for the group of splines that we want to start later and two sliders for the splines we transition earlier. We will only need to link the expressions by way of pick whip to the from spline since it's the settings on the from spline that control the color, shape, and blending. To add a control layer or adjustment layer, we go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, and select Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control. We can rename the adjustment layer, Later Transition Blend. Now we can duplicate that slider three times and name those Later Transition Blend, Earlier Transition Blend, and Earlier Transition Warp. I set the opacity and expansion values for the sliders that will be for the neck, head, arms, and hands to the expression controls, Later Transition Blend, and Later Transition Warp, and set those to change from 0 to 100 over the frame range 358 to 375. Then I set the sliders that will be for all the other ones, torso, legs, and feet, to transition early from 0 at frame 328 to 100 at frame 332. We will add an expression to each of the mask opacity and mask expansion controls for all of the from splines, as all of the masks will be linked to one of these sliders, and we pick whip them to the slider control for the from image. To add an expression to a property, Select the property, in this case Mask Expansion and Mask Opacity, in the Timeline panel and choose Animation, Add Expression, or press Alt-Shift for Windows or Option-Shift for Mac. To pick up the expression to the slider control, first put the Display on Unwarp From to unlock the properties, 
Then we go to the mask expansion property and select the pick whip icon and then drag to the slider and you'll notice a new expression text get added to the expression field as they're linked. Now you can pick whip all the neck, head, arm, and head splines to the mask expansion properties to the later transition warp slider and pick whip the mask opacity property for the same mask to the later transition blend. We will then do the same for the rest of the splines, the ones for torso, legs, and feet. We pick whip all the mask opacity to the earlier transition blend slider and the mask expansion properties to the earlier transition slider. That will take a few minutes, but once it's set up, everything will be linked to the sliders by way of expression and easy to control in groups. We've shown the shape and color blending happening at the same rate for each spline, but you can vary the shape and color transitioning at different rates on the same spline by varying the animation of the opacity and expansion controls at different rates. One more little note, sometimes it can be hard to figure out how to set all the per spline settings for the blend and the warp when you see a transition you don't like or it doesn't seem to be working correctly. So we provide a display mode called Control Image that shows how the blend and warp are being figured out. The Control Image displays the calculated in-between splines using the per spline geometry being used to control the morph, which can be useful when there's a warp that's doing something that's weird or undesired. You can go to the Effect Controls and pull down on the display menu to select Control Image. You will see a representation of the dissolve amounts for your morph. This display mode is very useful because it displays the amount of the two image blended for each pixel. The wider the pixel, the more of the two image will be displayed. A full black pixel in the Control Image means that the from image will be displayed at that pixel. A full white pixel means that the two image will be displayed. Values in between full black and full white represent a blend of the to and from images. Now you know how we vary the dissolve rate using Reflex Morph.